Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back. We hope that you had a very, very nice break and the quiz was very exciting. And we're back with another exciting talk, of course. So this one is going to be, there's going to be a demo in this particular talk and we're wishing him very well. We pray the demo gods and the streaming gods are on his side. So we're introducing Sebastian Gomez. He's going to be talking about external secrets operator. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you didn't jinx me with that. The gods of the Mogad. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, very excited to be here. Very, this is my, well, this is the second edition of the conference. The last time I was a host, now I'm participating here and I want to talk about this, this cool project that I've been working on with a lot of people from CS and a lot of people from other uh, companies. Um, yeah, hope you'll enjoy it. Awesome. Take it away. All right. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Um, like I said, this is my second time here. This is the second conference. I'm really ex excited to be here uh, uh, talking about this project that I feel very uh, proud of and, and exciting because I think it has some very good, uh, good solutions to a problem that I think we might all have. Uh, eventually. So, but first I want to start with a, with a little uh, exercise. If, uh, like Doc Brown said, if my calculations are correct, uh, two minutes ago, a tweet was delivered by me uh, saying, is this thing on? And with Celine Dion in a GIF. And I have to put Celine Dion because I'm living in Montreal and this is required by law. I have to mention Celine Dion every, every chance I, I can. Uh, so what I want you to do, because I want to see how many people are actually here, is I want you to reply to that tweet with a fire truck. If you are watching this right now, April 28th, I want you to reply that tweet with a fire truck. And if you're watching the recording uh, in the future, I want you to reply with a TV. That's for the younger generations. That's a TV, according to Apple. Uh, I used to watch one like that, uh, but they keep that emoji that way. I don't know why. Okay, so uh, feel free to go find that tweet and reply for me, please. I'm going to go over some boring stuff right now, and then I'm going to go over the good stuff. So this is me. I'm originally from Uruguay. Uh, that's why the, the weird accent. I now live in Canada. I've been living here for the last year. I'm a senior cloud native engineer at Container Solutions, and we help companies adopt cloud native technologies, practices, and improve processes. And if Jamie is looking at this presentation, he's going to tell me that it's half backward the, the order. And yes, but I realized just a few minutes before the, the, the talk, and I didn't want to mess up my, my slides. So, but I'm also a maintainer at the external secret operator project, which is why I come here to talk to. And I come from a strong background development, uh, applications and system architecture, and now mostly automating everything I can. So why the, the external secret uh, operator? Uh, to tell you why we, we started working with this, with this uh, project, I want to start by the problem. What is it solving? So let's start from the beginning. Let's say you have an application. You have your application, it's just, let's call it a monolith right now. It has, uh, it connects to a database, a relational database it could be. And it also consumes an API from an external provider or Twitter or weather API, I don't know, whatever. So probably that API provider, it, it gave you some credentials to access the API, right? So you have a secret, uh, a token, uh, maybe it's AWS, so you have an ID and, and a secret, a key, I don't know, whatever they provided, we'll, we'll call that a secret. And then also what you need to connect to the database, you're going to need the, where is that database, but more importantly, uh, the user and password to connect to the database, right? So we're going to call those thin lines secrets. Uh, they are sensitive data, right? Uh, and I'm going to be saying secrets a lot. 
so I try to uh, every time explain what I'm uh, what am I'm talking about uh, in each context. So, but now let's say that you have multiple environments, right? So you have development, you have pre-pro or testing, and you have production. So you want to use your database for the local environment, uh, uh, the same database for production and, and development. So you have different database and of course different credentials. So you can see that these lines start to multiply. So you used to have just uh, one set, one for database and one for API, and now you have three different sets. And let's say you want to go into a cloud native uh, transformation and you start building around your processes first and, and, and uh, your patterns and everything, and you go into microservices, or let's call it services. You split your big monolith into three services, each of them with their own database, uh, whatever that is, and each of them could uh, potentially be reaching out to different APIs on, on the internet, right? So now you can start to, to see the problem of, of handling those uh, secrets that we have all across our, our application. So the challenges in a multi-service and multi-environment setup in Kubernetes, this is for Kubernetes, is that you can end up with hundreds of secrets to manage. Of course, it is hard to handle rotations. It is hard to handle um, the, the onbo onboarding of new services, onboarding of new people with specific accesses, and distributing the secret securely. It's also kind of a mess. So I'm here to propose one solution. First of all, where can we store those secrets? Where do we store that sensitive data? Our user credentials for the database, our API token keys and secrets and, and whatever they provide us with. So different cloud providers, they already have a service for this. They have the secret manager, the cloud secret managers. AWS has one, Azure, HashiCorp, Google, IBM, Oracle, and there's more that they all provide this service. They have like this vault where you can keep your secrets. And you, if you already are working with a cloud provider, you get this, the, you already have this um, service. So it would be like the, the, the best option for you right now to, to store your secrets. It would be to have them here securely handling rotation and everything that's needed for a, for a secure secret storage. But you need those secrets somehow in your application, right? You need that secret in your cluster. So wouldn't it be nice to have something that syncs the secret from your current uh, storage in your cloud provider to your cluster? And I wouldn't have to worry about anything else. I manage my, hand, my secrets in the cloud provider and somehow magically those secrets are embedded as secret objects, native secret objects in my Kubernetes cluster. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, yeah, it is awesome and it exists. And that is the external secret operator project. This is exactly uh, what it does. And I will go into a demo later on uh, in a few minutes to, to show you how it does that. So this is the solution, actually. I mean, yeah, people are going to say that there's more. Uh, I think it's this, this is the best solution so far. And I'll tell you why. Um, to start, let me to begin with. Let me tell you about why why a, a, an operator and to to explain an operator. I need to start, or I want to start with controllers. So basically, Kubernetes, you have a controller that when you say, for instance, okay, I want a deployment of this application with three replicas. Um, that's your desired state. That's your big YAML that you saved and you applied, and that's uh, saved on etcd. And that's your desired state. And there's a controller on Kubernetes that will check that desired state and will also observe the real state, the, the, the system resources available. So do you have three pods? Are three pods of that application running? If not, it will 
spin up new pods to get the three replicas that you mentioned. And if you mentioned that you want to change the desired state to five or two, all you do, as you know, you probably know, uh, is changing that file, applying the new manifest, and the controller will take care of the rest. Will spin up new pods or will bring down uh, old pods if you if you need to change that that uh, amount of replicas. So an operator is basically that for a different kind of, of, of object. So with the external secret operator, we created a couple of different objects that were not uh, native to Kubernetes, like the external secret and the secret store. Um, we created the CRDs that define the, those, those objects, the external secret and the secret store. So Kubernetes knows that they are there, but it just ignores when, when I apply uh, an external secret, there's nothing that the Kubernetes controller can do with it. So we just ignore it. But that's where the external secret operator kicks in and it says, okay, you define it an external secret. I know that I have to create a secret with some names and, and some things that I'm, we're going to see later on. And, and I'm going to need to get that secret, the, 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 the sensitive data of it from a cloud provider. And I'm going to check the secret store in order to know which one, which cloud provider and how to get the credentials to access to that cloud provider. So basically what it's doing is the same as a controller, is checking with your desired state. So your desired state in this case would be, I have an external secret. Okay, there should be a secret uh, based on the requirements of that external secret. As I mentioned, we will see that in a, in a demo uh, real soon. So how did it, did it start? Um, I don't want to go through the whole story of it, but basically this was a project that uh, was started on, on container solutions. And we then realized there was a lot of uh, other projects working on the same kind of solutions. And especially, uh, particularly one from GoDaddy was pretty popular. And so long story short, Somebody say, hey, we should get together and work uh, together on the same thing. We're trying to solve the same problem with different approaches. How about having a, a single CRD? And so long story, very short, uh, we got together and now we're working. We created a new um, organization on GitHub called External Secrets. And we're working together with the, the team from GoDaddy that started the, the, the initial um, uh, project and us from Container Solutions and a lot of people from different different companies uh, are actually contributing and using uh, the external secret operator today in production environment. And we're doing pretty good. Uh, this is the latest. This is a, a, a graph that uh, Gustavo helped me get. This is the, the stars on GitHub. Uh, and as you can see, we are the red one and we're doing pretty good with, with the adoption. And, and I know you're going to say this does not make adoption, but it's getting uh, people's attention, right? It's, it's getting a lot of, of, of hype at least. And we've seen a lot of people uh, working with this and being um, yeah, interested in, in using it, but also in, in help us uh, with implementation and maintenance of this project. So we're pretty, pretty happy about it. So let's go to the good part. Let me show you a demo real quick of how we do this. And should be here. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is I already have my, I have a cluster in, in my local machine, this is a mini cube environment. And I have already installed the external secret operator. Uh, so if I go to get CRDs, you will see uh, it's not meant for you to uh, read all this, but there's a couple of uh, four actually extra uh, CRDs, which are the external secret and the secret store. There's also cluster external secrets and cluster secret stores, which I won't go into much detail uh, right now. 
So, and uh, if we want to see the secrets that we have here, it's just uh, the foil token for Minikube. That's nothing else here. So let's apply what I have here. And then I'll show you what this is. So basically, I created a couple of cluster secret store and an external secret. The external secret is right here. And I'm going to go through it uh, real quick. And uh, this is this is the name of the external secrets the of the external secret sorry. So the reference the 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 secret store ref. So where is going to get the credentials for and and what actual cloud provider is going to use is being referenced here by the cluster uh, cluster secret store that in this case is called Azure Secret Store. Okay. Uh, so it says that it's going to create a secret called my cloud secret with a secret key there's too many secrets here with a secret key the key of that secret is going to be called secret key that's not a very clever name that i picked but i hopefully uh, you'll see it in, in a minute um and the data of that secret will be get from a secret again on AW, on Azure in this case, right? Yeah, on Azure called example external secret key. Let me show you and uh, we'll get through it again. So get, uh, let's see, external secret. I can type right now. Yes, there's an external secret. The store is Azure secret store. So it says the status is secret sync. So if I go and get secret, uh, there's a new secret there called my cloud secret. I'm already tired of saying secret that much. So let's see what's in that secret. So let's get secret my cloud secret and say some path. Let's get the data. And the key we called it, remember, secret key. Secret key. Oh, there's something there. OK, let's see what it is. Base 64. Hello, WTF SRE. This is SRE 22 from Azure. There we go. That's the secret. So that's a secret. That's the content of the secret that's actually stored in uh, Azure. So if I want to change that and let's say, OK, I want my secret now to get its value from AWS. That means that I also have another secret on AWS, which is also called exter example external secret key with another value, of course. So I'm going to apply that change did i save it yes so i'm going to apply that change and the external secret has been configured and now i should have if i actually if i ask for the same yes now it says hello from aws it used to say azure now it says aws um right now i am using exactly the name of the key that i want to use from the cloud provider but i have different options like uh, if i have a json i can get just one of the one property from that json i can have a regular expression to have as many secrets as i want and i also I can have like finding secrets by tag uh, every cloud provider or most of the cloud providers allow me to add tags to secret so I can get, OK, get me all of the development or production secrets or whatever, my environment, right? So um, yeah, that's it for the demo. What just happened? There's a diagram. So I said secrets too many times. Hopefully, this will help you clarify. Um, so basically, I have my application right here. 
and the application needs a secret, right? Needs some secret to connect to the database or whatever we, we want. But we don't allow the developer to create that secret. The developer needs to assume that the, that the secret is going to be there. Um, so what they do create is an external secret. And this external secret has a reference to, in the first place, it has, it has a reference to our cluster secret store, which was defined uh, for AWS. So, sorry, for Azure. So it had like the vault uh, URL, the tenant ID, and the credentials were in another secret that I didn't show you in another namespace that me as a developer, I don't have access to it. And that's where the key and, and, and yeah, the secrets or whatever is needed for that current provider are, is stored, right? So in this secret store, we define, okay, the credentials are in the secret to go get the secret. Yeah, I said secret too many times. So then when, what I did was I changed this external secret and instead of getting the reference from the Azure secret store, I changed it to the AWS secret store. And the AWS secret store has a reference to another secret on the CRED namespace. Again, I don't have access to it. Um, so the, the operator, what it did was getting those credentials, went to Amazon, to AWS, reach out, look for the secret, grab the, the, the data and created a secret, whoops, sorry, created a secret with the content of the secret in AWS. I said secrets way too many times. I hope this is somehow clear. So uh, running out of time, I don't want to, I don't want to say any more secrets. So let's, let's go to the call to actions. Let's follow up in the chat here. If you have any questions, we might have a few minutes left to answer some of them. Go check it out. If you are using Kubernetes, I'm sure you'll need it. I'm sure it will be uh, a good uh, case for you uh, because if you're not using something like this, I'm not saying this, but if you're not so doing something like this, you might have some security concerns right now. Uh, want to help us, go to GitHub, the external secret uh, links is there, the, the GitHub repo. Want to join the conversation on the Kubernetes Slack. There's an external secret channel there. And also, and sponsored by the event ladies, go check out the sponsor booth. Uh, container solution is there, of course. Wink, wink, because we're, we're hiring. If you want to work with us, go to that link, apply. We're a bunch of cool people. That's it for me. Thank you all. Did I say too many secrets? I said too many secrets, right? <laughs> well, you, so. you didn't spill any of your secrets. But <laughs> it was talk about a lot of secrets. Yeah, it is a lot of secrets. But I, I didn't know how to handle like the right, what to call that sensitive data stored in, it's actually called a secret manager. So it is to store secrets. Yeah. It's a semantical way. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted to have Kubernetes secrets uh, and and use them as secrets in the in the cluster. <laughs> yeah, but too many secrets. Of course, you're, you're, you're permitted. Feel free to tell us all your secrets. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's one question. I see a question. Um, okay. It's from Emin, and it says. With Ashika Vault, you can inject secrets automatically into the applications. I think that's, it says that's a question. So can you inject secrets automatically into applications with Ashika Vault? I believe that's what it's asking. No, yes. Um, the thing is, Ashika Vault has its own, I know it has its own uh, operator to solve some of the, some of the things, uh, probably kind of the same way that we do. We don't inject into applications. We don't do that. We just create the secret, which is a good thing because if you also have an operator that needs to read secrets, you can still use our our solution. Uh, by our, I mean, I have nothing to do with it, just a maintainer, but uh, yeah, it feels like a baby to me somehow. So um, yeah, we don't inject. We create secrets, which I think is the semantic uh, way to do it. And anybody in the cluster can use them. 
being a pod, being an application, being an operator or whatever. And the, the other thing is HashiCorp has a solution that works only with Vault, obviously. And we have multiple plugins for multiple providers, as you saw. All the ones that I showed in the previous, uh, in, in the previous uh, slide, plus others, uh, a lot of providers. Mm. Awesome, awesome. So I hope that which is something. If you if you allow me, if you allow me, Larry, sure. uh, that's something that we're working on. This actually to sync from one provider to the other. So you hook your secrets to AWS, and you want them to be backed up in Azure. You can get the external secret operator to do that and have your secrets be sent back to another uh, cloud provider. I'll shut up. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. How many devs are involved in this? Oh, sorry. sorry? Mm -hmm. There was another question. How many devs are involved in the external secret operator? How many? Yes. How many what? How many developers? How many devs? Oh, how many devs? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I guess you can go to the repo and check out the, man the maintainers there. The, um, yeah, the contributors. I really didn't check. I don't know. Okay, I so there's another question, question, but I think yeah, I think this question will be answered for um when they check on the repository. It's about the size of the project. All right, so I'll just put the link in the chat. Yeah, I yeah. I didn't I didn't come prepared for those questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. so, thank you so so much, Seb. That was very interesting. Um, we hope that you stick around and you answer some questions in the chat. If you can. I will, and I, I will go and check my Twitter with Celine Dion to see how many people actually watch and, and answer that, that tweet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's important to mention Celine Dion as often as possible. Yeah, as yeah of course. Yeah. Was it like, did, did you guys check it? Was the tweet there? Yep, yeah, I did. Yeah. Ah, cool, good. <laughs> because I scheduled yesterday. This is something that I never used before. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Cool. All cool. right, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, mm -hmm. Seb. Bye-bye. All right, so we'll be moving on to the next thing, which is break. All right, so we want everybody to take some, you know, just about five minutes break and head over to track one for the keynote by Charity Majors. Any yes. other thing, Eva? Uh, don't forget to use our hashtag, uh, WHFSSRE. Um, don't forget to check out our sponsor booths uh, for our amazing sponsors who make all of this possible. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, it's been a long day, uh, and we still have some more amazing content to go. Uh, so come back after the keynote. We do have a couple more talks here. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye-bye. See you later.